This is prosthetics bar and star. He's a surfer and he takes his life in a very nice, you know, Aussie way. Music playing the radio, making all these legs and like, it's like a laboratory kind of thing. Being a surfer since I was young, liked the idea of working with fiberglass and my dad, who was a, a digger, saw an ad in the paper about making artificial limbs. So I was, a, I was a technician for probably eight, maybe ten years before I actually became a prosthetist. So we went from making them to then actually fitting them. My name is Chani. Chani is an amazing young woman. She was the main breadwinner in her family. Birth defect, born with one arm and one leg particularly useful when sat on a street corner to look needy and earn a lot of money. So three years ago we started working with her. We found her on the streets, we worked at street level. Then we convinced her parents to allow her to come to us at our center for an hour a day. Gradually that hour became two hours, became four hours, and eventually we managed to put her into this government residential school. My mother was with me when I was begging. One day, when Shaila passed by, she asked my mother, Why are you making your daughter beg? Why isn't she studying? Then Shaila asked me, What's your name? I told her my name is Chani. And she asked me, Did I want to study? I told her I would love to study very much. We work with slum and street children. We work with the community, we work with the parents, we work with the children, we provide uniforms in winter, uh, nutrition during the day, medical attention, as well as education and vocational training. We now have about 600 children. In one day I can learn a lot and I can read books quickly. I don't think she thinks of herself as a disabled person. She's very positive. She makes me laugh because she's faster on one leg when she hops than most people are on two. Our latest project is anti-begging. Children who are on the streets are exposed to not just the elements, but to the worst elements in our society. So whether it's drug trafficking, sexual trade, just lack of any hope. The idea is to reach these children, show them that there's an alternative. We're trying to make sure that these children are not left vulnerable on the streets. I am very happy that I am studying. I like Sila's hostel and I am happy to be here. When I was there I saw a lot of people without limbs that weren't wearing prosthetics. And, you know, as you know, it, uh, unfortunately, sometimes the kids are used for begging and as sad as it is, they're better off without a prosthetic leg because they can probably get more money on the streets begging. So to try and get those kids walking and active the way they should be without having to beg on the streets to help provide money for the family. That's one of the goals for this, to get this little girl happening and live as much of a normal life as she can. Hello. The first thing when I met Shani, and she saw I was a foreigner, the first thing she said to me, give me a leg, as if she knew that I had a leg to give to her. And then um, came Rani, you, came with the idea of coming to India and exploring the idea of um, Peter's leg. Paolo calls me up and he says, look, I've got this Land Rover and we're going over to Derudun. Um Come on, bring the camera. We arrived at Shiloh's school and out of the corner of my eye, I spotted this little girl on crutches just charging towards us. There was an assembly about to happen as well, and but she just came out and just straight for us, and she said, I want a leg, I want a leg, yeah. like this. So she's saying, please, can I have my prosthetic leg back? That was Chani. She knew exactly what she wanted, and we thought, yeah, well, somehow we'd like to make this happen. and. Yeah, thanks to Pete, it has happened. She's had her operation, her knee has been reshaped. The best news on that operation was that she didn't lose her actual knee and uh, the stump was able to be tidied up um, with what was left. We had to find a way to get a cast done and we all thought, well, we haven't kind of made cast before. Should we Google it? And then uh, Shaila said, no, no, go and meet Dr. Yogi. 
So Dr Yogi has a clinic at the foothills of the Himalayas and he looks after burn victims. We found our way into his surgery and he took a cast of Chani. I never knew Paolo. He came with, with the girl with the stump and he was so sincerely working for her. He asked me, could you make a cast for her? I said, let me try. He brought everything, plaster of Paris and all those stuff so that I can make a cast for the stump. And Paolo showed me the picture of Dr. Pete in his mobile phone. He loved me to be a very, very busy person, busy with the job. He was busy in his workshop. Well, the cast was done by the doctor over there. It was actually a pretty good cast when I got it. It was an excellent cast, really. We made the mode negative mode and we sent by a friend who just had arrived. And so she took with her the mode, the negative mode of uh, Shani's leg. Friends of India came out of collaboration between a few of us Australians and we realised that we could actually work on a few projects which we'd already started on in Rishikesh. So um, Sandra, Ritambra and Paolo, they formed a trust. I got in touch with Peter and I sent him pictures of Shani. So you can see in that one, there's quite a fair angle of adduction in the stump. I'm going to sort of go off that. What we want to do is position the foot laterally so that when she walks, she doesn't get this sort of knee action like this. And this is something that you guys will have to do in India. When I first heard about uh, fitting a leg on a, a young girl in India, I was a little bit, a little bit scared because I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. It was really helpful going through with Pete. He actually showed me every step of the way exactly what to do. She's got to put the liner on first, okay? Length of the foot, seven and a half inches. The measurement I've, I've got is seven and a half inches in length. I know she's missing the big toe on her other foot. That would mean that the shoe would be an inch longer and that would give her a whole inch of growth. The story goes that uh, people in Australia, when they die or when they upgrade their legs, they, their leg cannot be recycled for some health reasons or some regulatory reasons. So I had the idea of uh, recycling them, bringing those used legs and giving to people. So Haka was my first guinea pig and worked very well. Yeah. How did you lose your leg? Uh, when he was working, you know, in yeah. like uh, villages, like uh, tem, like breaking big big stone. Right. That time, yeah, that time one stone fell and it uh, like it hit here. Yeah. And after that, uh, like doctor, he have to also cut from here and here and from last he cut from here. They cut his leg and I was so sad. I was thinking, how would I raise the family? I still cry sometimes. We are still sad. We have three kids and lots of responsibility. Of course, I was very, very scared. I was thinking, should I just leave home and disappear in some remote area? I even wish that I would have rather died. I was thinking, how am I going to survive with one leg and work? I remember that I had a friend in Australia who used to do prosthetics. He knew that I did this. He's a good friend of my brother's. The chef where he was working lost his leg above the knee in a landslide. It just so happened that the ISPO, the international conference that we all go to, was on in India. And I said to Paolo, hey, I'm going to be up there in two months. So he said, oh, awesome. You've got to come up to Rishikesh. And, you know, and then I said, well, why don't we come on up and do a cast? And we could make your friend a leg. Brought the cast back with me in hand luggage and uh, modified it, made it. A few months later I went back to Australia and I collected a leg. It was, uh, you know, it was a modular leg with a modular knee and everything. So we made him something nice and light and a bit more comfortable with a foot that had really good movement. I gave him a crash course on how to fit it and he took it back and we fit it on Skype. He was really happy and then I thought, wow, you know, this is something that could happen. We could get some kind of enjoy leg for all, leg for everyone, give your leg. I think I'll be able to walk again properly. But I leave that to God, whether I'll be able to do so. 
That's our first um, overseas client, and this is our second. <laughs> In India, nobody would care about her. But to provide her processes, to put her through to the school, is just a life changing. Life changing. Life has changed for her altogether. Yeah, it's at this stage, you start to think about the client you're making the socket for. So I'm guessing 35 kg, so it doesn't need to be too heavy. It'll be strong, but we want to make it nice and light as well. For a young girl, you know, you'd have to say that she could become very active. And then we'll just stick a little bit of this darker stuff in. That's nice and dark now. I think she, she is pretty dark. Like that bit there might be a bit of a two-tone. She'll get a nice funky design with a bit of pigment there. I filmed that whole process just in case the Skype didn't work when we got to India, that I'd be able to actually still do the, the job of fitting Shandani's leg without uh, having Pete there. But luckily, uh, the Skype worked. Andy, another friend of Australia, was coming in two weeks. So within two weeks, Peter made the prosthetic leg for her and Andy brought. So within two weeks, we had everything done. Hi, Shandini. Hi. I hope Hi. I pronounce your name correctly. Uh, this Shand is a gift Shand from me to Shand you, okay? A gift is for you. Okay? A gift is for you. I cross my fingers that it fits okay. And I hope you like the shoes. <laughs> I got you. Maybe for the rain, good weather for school. All the best. All the best. Thank you. Actually, some people used to tease me because I didn't have any shoes. Okay, I'll push this one. My parents are very poor, that's why I beg. I have four brothers and five sisters. I used to beg till 5 p.m. When my brother came, I used to go to the shop. Thank you, Shantani. Well, it was a near impossibility to attempt to film and also be part of leg operations. That's it. I was living at Chanaghata and I had a plastic roof house. Looks pretty good. I guess one of the things that is slightly challenging when working in a country like India is the language barrier. So when I was working with Shandani along with Rani, we always needed a translator and we had various translators to help us. We were able to work with Shandani and communicate with her about what was needed from her and it worked really well. So do you feel my fingers are in the right spot? Well, can you feel the top of the hip on with, with both? Yes. Yeah. It was a great process and considering again just the, the difficulty of doing anything in India, somehow it happened. You know, we had to find even a ruler tape measure, yeah, just a rope, just different things. And of course, nothing's open till certain hours. Somehow all the bits arrived and uh, Andy and I had watched the video again the night before and thought, well, yeah, I guess we're going to do it somehow. So it was a little bit more complicated because Haka's leg was already fitted, but Chani's actually had to be fitted to her. Okay. How's that feel? Oh, how that feels. Is that good, Chani? Now people know that I have shoes. Do you want to, to walk from here across to here and then back again, just back, backwards and forwards? With, with the crutches, okay? <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be unusual for her putting a leg on. It'll be very different. And I, I'm sure it'll take a bit of getting used to. Chandni received a leg and immediately was walking at a rapid yeah, rate of knots. Video of the other guy walking on it. And yeah, they brought their legs, they met Chandni, and obviously they showed the video to Chandni. As soon as she saw the video, she understood the movement that she had to do with the legs to walk. And instantly, on the same day, as soon as she put the leg, she was walking with the two legs.
I remember Pete saying, you know, it can take up to a year for somebody to be able to use a prosthetic leg properly. But Shandani, even at the end of the first day, after I showed her the video of, of this other guy, Uli, demonstrating how to use a similar prosthetic leg, she picked it up so quickly and she was actually able to walk at the end of that day. I think I have found God. He has been a blessing to me, to our family. I worship Him as our God now. I always remember Him day and night. Because of Him, I can walk again. It's been life-changing. She's been running in marathons. She's been competing in other athletic events. She's also a singer and that's given her more confidence to use her talents. It makes me feel excellent. Yeah, really good. The leg is so great. Mobility, I mean, mobility is a great thing. It, it opens a, a, a world. When I went back to see her a couple of days later, she was walking around as if she'd had a leg all her life. She was amazing how quickly she picked it up. We got some Indian filmmakers to go and film her a couple of months later. Wow, she, she's kicking a football. That's a really cool result. But I, yeah. I love to play football. It's been amazing to be part of it and I'd like to do more. Uh, Dr Yogi's already offered his clinic so that we can set up some clinics for you know, more amputees. So yeah, sky's the limit. Pete, he's in his place there in Byron Bay and he's having a laugh. I bet he's drinking a beer, happy with himself, you know, because he made such a big difference in somebody's life. I mean, this is a kind of guy that he makes a difference in somebody's life every day with, with his work, you know. But now he's making a difference in somebody's life far away, you know, in somebody that he doesn't even know. जो सुनाती है बड़ी कहानी जी आई खुशबू लेके जा रहे जिंदगी में ना न जीना मोहब्बत है मोहब्बत है जो करती है जी भी भरी बने भरी भरी किया है हम तरसते बागे हम तुम्हारे लिए छिपा देंगे जादू ढूंढ के दिखा दो तुम फिर आओ ना आओ ना रात आओ बुलाओ क्यों तुम बुलाए हमें ले 